In today's video, I'm going to basically take you guys through the exact method which I use to grow my chest. Personally, I have very subpar chest genetics. So when I tell you that these things work in growing your chest, they do. Obviously, this is subjective, right? This is the advice that has worked for me. It might not work for you. But if I'm going to be 100% honest, it's going to work for you, bro. So let me get on with it. One of the main things I started doing, which as a result, I saw great progress in my chest growth, is doing pre-exhaustion sets before my compound lifts. Your chest amongst many things relies on how much of a mind muscle connection you get during your exercises what pre-exhaustion basically is you take two or three sets in this case on the pec deck or using cables and you perform chest flies 10 to 15 reps try fail within that rep range and really just get blood into the muscle and get a pump before you start actually doing your big compound pressing movements once you get to your pressing movements you will notice a way better mind muscle connection and a way better contraction which is essential to chest growth it's so important because when you do your big compound lifts okay let's say you're doing an inclined dumbbell press or you're doing a bench press you know a flat bench press these are compound lifts i.e they involve multiple muscles your tricep your shoulders and your chest for example what pre-exhaustion sets do is when it comes around to doing your compound lifts it will isolate your chest because you have blood in your chest now and it's pumped up and you fatigued your chest muscles when you perform your compound movements like your pressing movements it ensures you're targeting the right group in this case the chest rather than your triceps or your shoulders there's a big difference to the results you will see between doing pre-exhaustion sets and then your compound movements and going straight into your compound movements. For years, I would just start off with a bench press and do a PR and shit like that. My chest barely grew for a year, for two years because I didn't focus on the correct things. Because if you don't pre-exhaust and you go straight onto your compound lifts, you're just relying on momentum to lift the weight rather than your actual muscle. And by isolating your pec by pre-exhausting and getting blood into the pec, the muscle that you lift the weight most with is going to be your chest chest you're going to target your chest better that's how it works next is also another thing which i really effed up on and that was not prioritizing my upper chest which is by far the most important part of your chest your upper chest is responsible for the aesthetics of your chest if your lower mid chest is dominant this isn't really aesthetically pleasing and for those of you who care about aesthetics your upper chest has to be your top priority I would say the first compound movement you do, so right after your pre-exhaust, make sure it's an incline press, whether that's a dumbbell incline press, a Smith machine incline press, a seated incline press, an incline barbell press, any incline pressing movements for your chest, make sure you do them first right after you pre-exhaust, okay? You want to expend the most energy and the highest intensity on your first movement, obviously, and you want to target your upper chest on your first movement to get the most out of chest growth, but also to ensure that you're prioritizing and you're developing that upper chest. My advice would be personally stop flat benching and just focus on incline pressing movements the reason being of course they target the upper chest but also they allow for the greatest range of motion because if you're flat bench pressing your elbows tend to stop at 90 degrees and you're not really getting that full stretch which is essential for building your chest because the part of the movement where you're at your deepest stretch and you can feel the most stretch in your chest is the most important part and is essential to getting the most out of chest growth because if you stop at 90 degrees which tends to happen when you're flat bench pressing a lot of try tricep is involved in pressing that weight up. If you can get deeper and get a full range of motion, which the incline dumbbell press allows you to do, this incorporates more chest activation and therefore more chest muscle fibers, which leads to more chest growth rather than tricep activation and tricep growth. The next thing is do not overtrain your chest, okay? You can get away with more volume, you know, when you're training your side delt, your calves, but your chest does not need four or five sets per exercise. It does not need four or five exercises on your push day, okay? I have a golden rule when it comes to chest. On your push day, don't do more than three exercises which target your chest and don't do any more than three sets per exercise. You have to allocate rest between sets and you have to make sure you're recovering because you want to be training very intensely and as heavy as you possibly can go within an optimal rep range. You want to make sure you're resting, I would say, three to four minutes at least between sets. Because think about it, if your top set for whatever inclined chest press you're doing is heaviest weight you can go for like six to 10 reps, if you're going all out till failure, then you need to give yourself time to recover because these big compound movements, they take a toll on your central nervous system and fatigue your body. Don't go straight into your next set after one or two minutes and expect to hit the same weight for the same amount of reps. Your chest, from my experience, needs longer to recover. When you recover is when you grow. So make sure you're not overtraining your chest. Also, based off my experience, I found that pressing movements do prove more effective than cable flies. A thing I really like to do is I set up a bench, I do a seated chest press with cables. I only very rarely do working sets of chest flies. 
flies. So maybe I'll do a pec deck, chest flies, two or three sets with some drop sets and some rest pauses. But typically I just do three pressing movements. So I start off with incline dumbbell press, then I move on to maybe a seated machine press, and then I'll do one more pressing movement using cables. And typically I'll alternate between these things. Maybe I'll do an incline barbell press as well as an incline dumbbell press and then finish off with some cable flies. But very rarely do I do working sets of cable flies because personally I see more growth when I just prioritize intense pressing movements. Next step, as I touched on previously, one of the most important things when it comes to chest growth is focusing on the contraction you get and the mind muscle connection. When doing your pressing movements, make sure you are constantly focusing on getting a squeeze at the top of your rep. This is crucial to chest growth. When you hold the squeeze at the top of your rep, this increases the time under tension, which at the end of the day leads to muscle growth. Hold that squeeze for one second, you'll see crazy results over time. Next, I'd attribute 50% of my chest growth in the past year to doing this, and that's controlling the eccentric part of the movement. If you're not slowing down and controlling the eccentric part of your pressing movements, then you are missing out on, in my opinion, 50% of your chest growth potential. Next one is an obvious one, progressively overloading. For your chest, I find this is particularly important. If you're not progressively overloading on your chest, no matter how much of a pump you have, you're not gonna grow your chest. So week by week, up the intensity, whether that's upping the reps you do, upping the weight you do, make sure you are progressively overloading and you're training till failure. Your last rep, you have to barely get up. Okay, lastly, ego lifting. For some reason, we always wanna ego lift on chest. We wanna go heavy as possible. We're gonna impress everyone in the gym, but please, I'm guilty of it too. Do not fall for this ego lift trap on chest. Don't be tempted to lift heavy weight weights with improper form and technique okay if you have to take one thing away from this video it's this focus on instead of lifting more weight with your chest that you can't handle focus on making the rep or making the set harder using the same weight focus on improving your technique slow down the eccentric pause at the bottom of your rep squeeze harder use better control and build a better mind muscle connection okay those things are crucial to growing your chest i hope these tips will help you in your journey to build large breasts. I really appreciate everyone who's liked, comments, subbed these past few videos. I hope you've enjoyed the content so far. I'm gonna be coming out with a video very soon, but until then, peace.